back here in the Greater Accra Region, four national security operatives arrested for parading at the NPPIRSU North Constituency Voting Centre have been put before the court and remanded into police custody. The suspects are to reappear with other accused persons on the 10th of May 2022. Regional Police Commander DCOP Idilansa Seydou says the police service has the capacity to provide security for the constituency elections. If you are a security organization and you find yourself here, you are an unwanted person. Talk about national security, sir. We have, the, the, we have made it clear to the party officers that the Ghana Police Service is capable of conducting, providing absolute security for this election. So we don't want to entertain any other form of security at the polling stations. So the men, how many men did you arrest today, those pals from national security? Four, four guys were picked up. Today? Yes, this morning. And then yesterday too, I know that about two guys were picked up. At Earlier the on, yes. Um, do we know the status of investigation of those two persons? We are taking care of them at the appropriate level. So they are in your custody? Yes, please. So going forward, we have tomorrow, Sunday and Monday, persons who are from national security wanting to perhaps be at the voting grounds. What will be your words to them, sir? If you are a delegate and you are with a national security or whatever set up, come in the form of a civilian and vote and go away. If you come like us standing here, we'll take care of you. Because this election is the Ghana Police Service who has been mandated to provide absolute security for the elections. And we're not going to entertain counter security on the ground. Because yesterday it was in the news. I mean, I captured a man in that uniform uh, taking part of the voting process. So nobody should do that going forward. Absolutely. If you are a delegate, come in the form of a, mo a mufti and do what you are supposed to do. Nobody will unmask you. But if you want to wear, a, you hide under any uniform and come in, either to intimidate or obstruct, we'll take care of you. Also, let's check uh, out what's happening on the ground. Uh, my colleague, uh, Kwesi Paka Wilson, has been monitoring events, uh, joins me live from the uh, Yawasu North constituency. Paka, what can you report from where you are? So, blessed. Currently, I'm at the mother and child community day school where the governing NPP is organizing the uh, Ayawaso North Constituency Executive Elections and as I speak to you, voting has ended, counting has ended, quite a number of delegates have been celebrating their respective candidates who have won the elections and I must say that if you see the background you realize that at the total darkness there are no provision of light, the policemen who had gathered here uh, this evening had to use the uh, a headlight uh, to serve as a form of light in assisting the electoral commission count the ballot papers and equally declare uh, the result for the various candidate. I have with me uh, this young man. Uh, he is a new entrant. Uh, he contested with the incumbent chairman for the Iowa so not constituency, and he has been declared victor of uh, this evening's election. And as you can see, he's all over draped in powder and water as well. And I can see. Some some tears um, running through his eyes. He, uh, popularly, but you're almost because Tim Kelly, Tim Kelly, Tim Kelly, Tim Kelly. Right, so, so it's, it's, it's Tim Kelly. Uh, what? Uh, yeah, yeah. So let's go and speak to the man himself, sir. Thank you very much for your time this evening. You have won this election and why the tears, sir? Huh. Actually, um, we have to give thanks to the Lord. This is an internal election, and um, I shouldn't be sharing tears. But looking at the general election, looking at the internal election, I think the internal election is more harsh than the general election. You can see the insults, um, the name shaming, and all those things. But finally, the youth has spoken, the delegate has spoken, and I also not chose Kelly. I thank each and every one of them. And you, you, you are shocked by how people treated you, delegate treated you when you are going through this election? I believe going through elections, you have a lot of challenges. Mine was very exceptional. People used a all, lot of stuff against me. But I think when the day got there, the delegate decided. And I was For me, this is an orphan constituency as a chairman. 
of the key responsibilities to ensure that this constituency gets a legitimate member of parliament to represent the party. As you have won, I want to ask from you, what are you going to do to ensure that that, that dream is realized? Actually, I won't say for myself, you could see the youth behind me. Assuming we had this youth, previous election, I think we could have won this election. Me being the youth and the youth favorite, I think I will lure them back into the MPP. This seat, we can win it. This is not an F1 consensus again. Hopefully, by the help of God, we are going to win this seat once in my administration. We thank God. MPP will take this seat. Thank you very much. So these are the words of uh, Kikeli himself, who has won the election, and he's confident that um, come 2024, he is going to win the Iowa so not constituency seat for the governing MPP. And Jojo, let me say that earlier in the day, the Ghana Police Service were equally present here. In fact, they have been here since morning, quite a number of them. But the regional police command himself, um, that is DCOP, Idi Seido, or came around to also uh, assess the situation on the ground. Now, upon his arrival, uh, it was established that about four persons who were posing as national security uh, operatives have been arrested. And there was a warning from the regional command that the Ghana Police Service has the capacity to handle or provide security for this constituency elections across the greater Accra region. And so any person who is posing as a national security operative or perhaps from any sister agency should back off, give the police the sole responsibility to provide security going forward. So this has been the situation here at the Iowa so North constituency. Largely, the election has been peaceful, it's been smooth, and the delegates have complied with the lay down procedures, and the EC has equally given them the, the education that they have to go through. So if you come to Iowa so West, uh, Iowa so North constituency, the, uh, the election has ended and everything is peaceful. Wow. Parker, I'm grateful that you've been able to give us some updates uh, there. We'll still keep our eyes uh, on the grounds, monitoring uh, all the events for you here on the Joy News Channel. But the Ghana Police Service has given some updates as well. Uh, the Police Service is warning that uh, the NPP constituency uh, executives must behave appropriately during the exercise. And you have the update on your screens right now. Uh, it reads updates on arrest of uh, at Okaikwe South constituency. Today, 29th of April, 2022, the accused persons, John Asel Ba and Inokwami uh, Busumpim, were arraigned and have been remanded to reappear on the 10th of May, 2022. Now, a third suspect, Ebenezer Pencil, who was later arrested was also put before court and has been remanded to reappear with the other accused persons on the 10th of May 2022. The police service remains committed to delivering on our mandate of maintaining law and order in the country, and we urge the public to continue to support us. So that's the indication we're getting from the Ghana Police Service there. Well, the service is also warning NPP constituency executives against deviant behaviors. The director of operations at the police service, DCOP Mohammed Shraj, who is in charge of the Ablikma North constituency, warned that any party member who fails to comply with the rules will face the law. Speaking to Joy News, he indicated that the police has revised its security arrangements to ensure law and order during the conduct of the constituency polls. But as you rightly said, when you plan, you always go back to revise your operation to suit the demands. We have information that this constituency has a record of, you know, violence in the past. Or it's a hospital. So we decided to begin to plan accordingly by taking security measures proactively. As you can see, We've deployed to secure the venue where the election will take place. Right. And even before coming at the junction, we saw our motorbikes also deployed. And then the combat teams from the Accra region and then the National Operation Department working together to ensure that there's also orderly parking of cars, there's good access, and also working with the chairman of the committee here. And the two municipal chief executives are also here. The, the, the electoral officers are also here. And the MPs, 
We are now inviting the coordinators. Okay. So what we want to do is engagement. Mm. We want all stakeholders to have a meeting with us. Security is a collective and shared responsibility. Meanwhile, Abligma North MP Sheila Batel says the constituency has solved issues of removal of names from the register. She believes the move will actually douse any agitation. So that that has been resolved or is being addressed. That one is being addressed. It's being addressed. Yes. So there wouldn't be any because issue. Because there were one or two issues that came up after the album had been presented. Okay. But knowing that these are people who are supposed to be in there, but for one reason or the other, are missing, we have already discussed it with the elections committee. We have agreed to ensure that those people are not to so that they will be resolved later in the election. Well, in the Ashanti region, eight of nine NPP executives in the Subin constituency have maintained their seats. This follows a chaotic start to the polls. Some aspirants who attempted to block the election accused the party's leadership of breaching internal processes to hold a delegates conference. Nanai Aljima filed this report from Kumasi. 897 delegates were expected to participate in the election of executives in the Subin constituency. Edusai Puku was re-elected as chairman with others retaining their positions. I'm the chairman. I have not received any injunction. So I don't want to talk about court issues. All the contestants were here. When we were counting, the agents were there. They all signed. Eight of nine incumbent executives who sought re-election won. There was chaos at the beginning of the election when some aspirants for executive positions made attempts to stop the election. They accused the party's leadership of breaching internal processes to hold delegate conference. Aspiring chairman Mark Che said the date for the re-election was set in less than 24 hours, denying them access to voters register. Yesterday, there was a meeting. They called that meeting emergency meeting. The emergency was, we have to uh, hold the elections tomorrow not given a chance to speak to one delegate. No, I don't have the album. And I don't even have a polling agent, all right, to write my results for me. Okay, so how do I go on? Is that the way in the, uh, elections are conducted? Already, some aggrieved persons who were not satisfied with the polling station election secured an injunction on the constituency polls. There's an injunction against this election exercise today. Okay, how do we go? knowing very well that there is a law of the land the law of the land is telling us not to go on with the election there was heavy police deployment on the ground while some heavily built men also paraded the polling center for the youth organizer position yao gerardo's name was missing from the ballot paper reason for the missing details of the candidate remains unknown elections in the subin constituency over the years have been mad with infractions with some aggrieved members closing down party office after the polling station elections. After the parliamentary primaries in 2020, some members whose names were missing from the voter register resorted to the courts. Meanwhile, the member of parliament, Eugene Boache Entry, maintains the process was fair. We had 900 delegates breaking it down we have 170 polling stations times five, that's 850, plus 22 coordinators, 70 constituency executives, myself included as the MP, five patrons and five council of elders. We gathered here this morning around about 8 a.m. And the electoral commission came to conduct, I believe, one of the most peaceful and democratic, free and fair uh, elections today. We've all seen it. That the best of Subin has been put on display today. Clearly, the elected executives will have to do a lot to unite the rank and file of the party in the Subin constituency. For Joy News, Nanaya Aljima reporting.
Annually elected NPP chairperson for Manisha South constituency, Richard J. Menza says there will be resistance to the imposition of what he terms is the unwarranted directives from regional executives. According to him, no party member will be allowed to sabotage the member of parliament, Dr. Mati Okupoku Prempe. Nanaya Ojima has the rest of the story. <laughs> The Mensha South constituency election was peacefully conducted. The elected executives say they are poised to ensure ruling NPP retains power in the 2024 election. Newly elected constituency chairman Richard E.J. Mensa says punitive measures will be put in place to instill discipline. He says saboteurs against the member of parliament will not succeed. Everyone is aware that Dr. Machi Opoku Prempe, our MP, has performed very well. We all know he's one of the best ministers. We share the same dreams. Whoever plants evil against him will face our wrath. Some regional executives witnessed the conduct of the polls. Richard E.J. Mensa said any oppressive directives from regional executives of the party will be resisted. <laughs> There are some things that I wasn't happy with when I was just a member. Some people from the region take decisions that affect constituencies negatively. This will not happen under my leadership. I will make sure the laws work. I will resist any attempts to impose certain decisions on us. The newly elected constituency executives pledged to work in unity. For Joy News, Nanaya Ojima Kumasi. Well, she's 65 years old and has a physical disability, but that would not stop the uh, wholeheartedly uh, decision to support the party. Hajia Mariama Adama, a member of the NPP Council of uh, Patrons at the Ayasa North constituency, was struggling to move freely uh, from one polling booth to the other to cast her ballot. According to her, the gathering of the NPP members excited her emotions. Her reason, um, and a reason for which she indicated that she would not be left out for, from participating in the elections. There's more in this report. Hajia Mariama Adama is 65 years old and a member of the Iowa Synod Council of Patrons for the governing NPP. Hajia Mariama, as she is affectionately called, served as a constituency organizer for eight years and was the first vice chairperson of Iowa North. Her inability to walk did not prevent her from participating in the constituency elections at the mother and child community school at Mamobi. As delegates were failing to cast their ballots, Hadia, who has been operated upon twice after a fatal accident, was seen in a wheelchair completing the voting process. With visible pains playing out on her face, she slowly made her way from one polling boat to the other. She never gave up as she subdued her pains and smoothly went through the voting process. The Electoral Commission had made arrangements for proxy votes, but Hadja insisted to be physically present at the voting grounds. Well, it is my obligation to do that. It is my right to come and cast my vote, even though I'm not feeling fine. Once I'm still alive, I have to serve my party. That is why I have come. I want to see things for my own self. When I come in occasions like this, I become so much happy in my heart. When I see MPP members come together to do something like this nature, I am more than a happy person. That's why I came myself. So you love the party? Too much. Speaking to Joy News, she expressed concerns over the incessant calls on government to address challenges faced by the ordinary Ghanaian and called on the electorate 
to appreciate the global challenges which has had a negative impact on the Ghanaian economy. She is however confident government would solve the challenges before the 2020 polls. I am so much disturbed about the way people are talking. I think what is happening to Ghana is not Ghana alone. It is the whole world. I am a Ghanaian. I also go to the market. I pay electricity, I pay water. But I believe that within the three years, it's going to be okay for Ghana. The former constituency women's organizer, who is rooting for a Dr. Balmya presidency, asks Allah to bless the NPP with victory in 2024. I am praying that we have victory. We are the victorious. And I am fully going for Baumia. Yes, I am fully, fully going for Baumia. And I know with Baumia, we are going to break the eight. Because this is the time for Dombo also to come alive. Hajia Mariama Adama, just like many others, is confident the governing NPP will break the eight. For join news, I am Chrissy Parker Wilson, Mamubi. Now, Professor of Communications Studies Audrey Igajepo has condemned the lack of action by the police and other state security actors in taking action on the abuse of journalists in Ghana. More after this break. Media Foundation has documented several.